it, it ain't easy. We just make it look that way. Quote, J. Jonah Jameson. J. Jonah Jameson, Ben Parker, and the Green Goblin. Fan favorite duo, Ben Parker and J. Jonah Jameson take center stage in this investigative mystery issue. But in this world of shadows and secrets, every unturned rock leads to danger. And they'll soon have to decide which is the greater challenge, uncovering secrets or keeping them. Ultimate Spider-Man, Volume 3, Issue 10. 20 years ago, the Maker prevented a radioactive spider from biting a young Peter Parker. He likewise prevented the creation of any other superheroes and formed a secret council to rule the world from the shadows. Nine months ago, Tony Stark sent Peter that same radioactive spider along with a Picotech suit and warnings of the Maker's Council, a shadow organization that rules the world. Since then, Peter has used the incredible powers granted by the Spiders bite to fight crime alongside Green Goblin, a.k.a. Harry Osborn, the co-CEO of Oscorp. Meanwhile, Ben Parker and J. Jonah Jameson has launched an underground news organization called The Paper. After departing the Daily Bugle over creative differences with its owner, Wilson Fisk, in October... In New York City, Ben Riley holds two Starbucks coffees and tells J. Jonah Jameson that he's got good news and bad news. J. Jonah Jameson wants to hear the bad news first. Ben Riley replies, The sun goes down, the sun goes up, people change every day, Jonah. Then Ben continues, Well, we have a very respectful drive out to Long Island ahead of us. Jonah asks, Why is that the bad news? Ben responds, I see a trip to a golf course in your immediate future. J. Jonah says, hmm, you know the devil in invented that game, right? What's the good news? Ben replies, I know for a fact that a certain lawyer is going to be there. Tea off time at 10 a.m. Lunch in the clubhouse at noon. J. Jonah Jameson likes this idea. Jonah and Ben arrive at the golf club where they confront James Weasley, Wilson Fisk's personal assistant and lawyer. Weasley isn't concerned with having seen the reports they've been doing on the fighting around town, assuming they aren't much of a threat to him or his employer. But just like Mary Jane predicted, their clickbait reporting has led people to underestimate them. So when Ben reveals that he has some files on the Stark Stain sale, Weasley is caught off guard. Ben Riley says, This paper is authorizing the sale of Stain and Stark to an offshore company that's owned by another offshore company and so on. Don't get me wrong. If I have to, I'll follow it all the way to the source, no matter how long it takes. But we're hoping you could save us a bit of trouble. Weasley, surprised and unsure how to respond, managed to brush off orders without giving them anything concrete, though clearly rattled. One week later, we see Ben and Jonah shifting through papers, analyzing and coordinating as they finally crack the code, trying to track down where one company ends and a new one starts. They are determined to bring the truth to the public, and it all starts with a whiteboard. Eventually, they discover the sale went through Oscorp, the same Oscorp that owns the paper, putting Ben and Joan on a trail that leads to Gwen Stacy. This universe is Gwen Stacy is very much in control of every situation. Even when Ben and Jonah don't realize it, she's manipulating them, though she does get flustered. Gwen starts by saying she paid for their offices, she paid for the paper, and then asks, so what can I do for you? Jonah says, well, this thing is delicate and we don't want to upset you. Gwen responds, I promise you're talking to the wrong lady in the wrong town because I'm not delicate and you will not upset me. Ben says, fair enough, good to hear. One of your reporters is working on a story and we like to tell you about it, then ask you a few questions. Gwen Unfazed says, hmm, Okay, I'm intrigued. Let's hear it. Jonah explains, last November, Stain Stark was sold off on a the cheap. And then, as far as we can tell, it was sold and resold to several faceless companies before eventually being bought by a company under the Oscorp umbrella. This implies you own it. And that's the story we're working on. Gwen Silcom asks, what's the name of the reporter working on the story? Ben pulls out a recorder and says, well, that's an interesting question, no doubt. We could talk about that. But first, we have a few of our own. Who arranged your deal to buy that company? Why are you working so hard to hide the fact that you own 
staying stark? What happened to all that technology? Why does all this coincide with the people suddenly flying through the air in armored suits? And finally, we're wondering if you're the one secretly financing all that, Jonah adds. Care to comment? Gwed finally showing a reaction says, sure, I want my money back. After a family dinner, Ben ends up talking with Mary Jane about what happened. Mary Jane, who runs the paper's PR department and is somewhat friends with Gwen, confronts Ben. Gwen is one of her clients and MJ is well aware of the meeting Ben and Joma had with Gwen. MJ wishes Ben had held off the story a little longer until they could secure some advertisers. But Ben knows the story needs to be told and spread. That's literally their business. MJ is also worried about their friendship with Gwen, which could be at risk, as well as potential impact on their business. Since Gwen is one of her clients, she gets upset. MJ could lose her souring their deals. MJ is the primary breadwinner for her family, and if she loses Gwen as a client, both she and Peter could face financial trouble. Peter just wants to stay out of it and collect unemployment. Mary Jane says, we just want to be sure because this could blow up everything you guys have done. Ben replies, and Gwen, Mary Jane adds, Gwen's also a client, and she asked me to ask, so I'm going to ask. How long until you run this story? Ben says, tell her she's got a week. Two days later, Gwen Stacy sends her husband, the Green Goblin, who is a partner in Oscorp, to visit Jonah and Ben Riley. Before entering the offices, Harry Osborne thinks of Peter and says, hope you can forgive me if this doesn't go well. When he enters the paper, two smug faces and confidence of these two old reporters are beaming. Ben and Jonah treat Harry Osborne in the situation as a joke, even betting on how many days it would take for someone to show up and who it would be. Harry says, you're treating this like it's a game or something. Well, if that's how it's going to be, we might as well get to it. What do I need to do for you not to write the story about Oscorp and what our company may or may not own? More jokes from Jonah follows. Harry reiterates, gentlemen, I am not here to play games. Ben responds, we're not either, Mr. Osborne. I know we've only spoken a few times and I've had a complicated interaction with your father, but I have hard time believing you bought and carefully hid Stain Stark with bad intentions. Ben continues, because my wife died at the same time and the same way your parents did. And like my friend Jonah here, I'm also a student of human behavior. Jonah adds, as we let your wife know, it's hard not to notice the coordinated timing between Oscorp taking over the company and the emergence of green armor flying through the air. Ben then says, what we think is that Oscorp took the existing Iron Man technology, put a new coat of paint on it, and shined it up nicely for a new show. That continues, and more than that, I think it's you or your wife inside the suit. This makes Harry Osborne very angry, and suddenly the armor on his hands and forearms of the Green Goblin's Pico suit starts to form. Harry says, I suggest you leave my wife out of this. Once again, the two smug reporters are betting on who the Green Goblin is. Harry can't believe this is really happening. Harry says, enough with your banter, enough with your nonsense. So you figure it out, I'm the Goblin, which puts me in a dangerous spot. I guess the question is, what am I going to do about it? The conversation becomes more serious. Ben says, Jonah, it seems Mr. Osborne here thinks we're writing a story about who the Green Goblin is. Is that what we're doing? Jonah responds, no, Ben, I don't think we are. Harry says, okay, I'm officially tired of this. Last warning, stop screwing around. What are you two up to? Ben replies, here's our real question. We know that Fisk enabled the sale of the company to Oscorp, and we also know that you and your spider friend have been waging a two-person war on the Fisk empire. Then Jonah adds, so why would Fisk sell you the very thing you're using to destroy him? Harry Osborne says, because he doesn't know that buried deep inside, Stain Stark was a hidden record of what Fisk and the people who control Fisk had been up to for decades. I learned, well, I learned they're evil, like old as history of man evil, and they have to be stopped. It's funny. I came thinking I was going to have to stop you by any means necessary or help you get to the bottom of things. I thought the later would be easier, but now I'm scared to give it to you. I didn't think it would be so easy for you to put all this together the way you have. J. Jonah Jameson says, kid, it ain't easy, 
We just make it look that way. Harry continues. They're the ones who did it. They killed my parents and they killed your wife. Can I trust you? Harry Osborne hands over the data stick to Ben. Parker asks, what's on it? Harry replies, a rabbit hole. This is everything Oscorp has on record about the man who made the world the way it is. His council that's running things. What really happened when Stark and yes, Fisk. Your story starts there. Then if you have the courage to write it, it will grow. Do you think you're up for this? Because these people are dangerous and ruthless. You have friends. You have family. There's a reason I wear a mask. I wouldn't put my name anywhere near the story. Ben responds, who said we were? One interesting fact, it seems Gwen Stacy is the one manipulating Harry Osborn to do whatever she wants. It appears she's truly the one in control here. Later that evening, J. Jonah Jameson and Ben Parker are typing away. Jonah says, okay, done. Want to give it once over before we publish? Ben replies, yeah, it's good. Jonah adds, I know. You're ready? You're ready to jump off this cliff? I know, but I gotta ask. Ben says, I'm going in head first, pal. You can follow me down. Besides, that's the point of us using the byline, right? Jonah nods. Yeah, a fictional name to hide behind, a fictional newsman to throw off the scent. Ben concludes, hello world. You're about to read the most explosive story in years, and it's brought to you exclusively by the papers. Brand new, top secret, investigative, reporter, prodigy. This prodigy is Ben Riley, and this made-up reporter wrote, in the paper, New York Kingpin, Wilson Fisk runs New York, but who runs Wilson Fisk by Ben Riley? Ben Parker says, all right, let's run it. Next, Ultimate Spider-Man, Volume 3, Issue 11.